do that. Okay. Here's the underside of the 7D camera, and here is one of the tripod plates from our Vinton tripods. As you can see, there's a small stud for the stabilizer uh, area on the DV cameras, but this area, the little hole, does not exist on the bottom of the 7D. This is just a screw, uh, not a hole for this peg. So you want to make sure that if it's a rigid fixed peg and can't be removed or can't be uh, uh, drop down uh, flush with the plate that you have this peg out just in front of where the body of the camera is. So you can see we'll get it just about in this vicinity and tighten it up. So we'll get a set screw in place. There we go. Line us up so that that pin is just on the front of the body, not too far in, and we tighten up. If you're out in the field and you don't have a screwdriver, a simple set of keys will do fine. Find one that's thin enough for the thumb screw area and just give it a little turn until it's tight. Okay. Your 7D is ready to go. Just turn it on with this thumb switch. It'll boot up and then it'll be ready to go. By default, if you're in the normal photo mode, the screen will be blank and the viewfinder will be open and ready to go. Um, if you're in the photo mode, you can look at the manuals and online materials to see which of the photo modes or even a custom mode you might want to be in. If you want to go to the full motion video mode, it doesn't matter where this wheel is set. Full motion video is controlled by this guy over here. So right now we're in the still mode. If you flip it to the left, it'll put it into movie or video mode and then the display will become active. The first thing we want to do is format the card so it's ready to go free and clear of any other media. Go into the menu, and the menu will remember the last menu setting we were on, so that's why it didn't go to the first option. Using the joystick control, we're going to go over to the right until we see Format in our menu. Uh, in the mode we're in right now, it's the very first wrench uh, for settings, and we're going to go up to Format and hit Set. Okay, Set is on this wheel. And it says, format card, all data will be lost. Yes, that's what we want to do. We use joystick over to the right to say OK. Hit set again, and it'll format the card. Uh, in this case, the card had pretty much nothing on it, uh, and so it was a very fast format. If your card has a lot of material already on it, the format will take a little more time. Uh, other settings in this area that you want to look at while we're here, um, auto power off, we've turned off. We know we're going to be in the movie mode. Uh, we don't, we want the live view on all the time, and while we're setting the shot, we don't want the camera to just turn itself off. If you're worried about saving battery power, you can go into this and change that. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration and for normal shooting, you probably want that off. Keeping in mind, that's going to suck up your battery a lot faster. Okay. Auto-rotate. Um, if you rotate the camera 90 degrees, uh, you want the picture rotated 90 degrees, not the picture rotated back to landscape so it's good for you. So we turned auto rotate off. We formatted the card already. File numbering in this case is going to be continuous, but you can also go in and reset the file numbering system to whatever you want um, and shoot just on the raw uh, portion of the card. Uh, don't worry about selecting a folder. Uh, every once in a while there'll be a problem with the card and the speed if you've got too many folders and files. So don't worry about the folder, just go right on to the root of the card. And that's our first settings menu in format. While we're here, uh, not too much you need to worry about changing in the next menu. Um, the LCD brightness, if you're working outside, you can brighten it up. Date and time should be preset. English language is desirable. NTSC is our video system. If you find that there's some dust on the sensor, you can force the sensor to clean itself at any point. Um, but it's also enabled that when you turn on and turn off the camera, the sensor will clean itself by default back out. Uh, there's grids that can be displayed on the viewfinder. Right now we've got these disabled for easier viewing. Okay. Other information on the camera, um, if you want to check the battery length and life of the battery, joystick up to battery info, say set, and right now in our current battery we've got 39% of it remaining. Okay. You can also change other options and settings. Okay. Please don't clear all the camera settings and it'll tell you the current version of the firmware. Uh, here are custom settings, also favorite or uh, your own personal settings. Here are uh, additional options for how the viewfinder and the, uh, 
the live view display will display information for you. You can uh, go through the manual and other online tutorials to see uh, what these do. Okay. Here's uh, the first movie mode menu. Okay. Uh, the autofocus is in live mode. In most cases, you will shoot with autofocus off, so you'll be in manual focus. So this might not apply. Here's how you can turn on and off the display for the grid. Your movie recording size, as with the HMC 150 camera, we recommend 1280 by 720, that's 720p, at a 59.94 frame rate, so that's what the 60 there is for. As you can see, this camera does have a few other options, but for most shooting, go with 1280, 720p. Uh, you do want to record sound. Uh, there is no XLR input on this camera, but with a uh, extra audio recorder, such as the Zoom H4n or a Marantz recorder, uh, you can record dual system or sync sound. Uh, but as a reference track, you always want to record sound so you have something to sync up to and not just worry about video uh, syncing to external audio. Silent shooting is just a mode for how the shutter works and how the beeping works. Uh, metering timing uh, is how, whoops, sorry, meter timing uh, is how it will set the timer for your metering mode. Uh, you can leave that alone. Okay, some additional options. Okay, here are your main imaging options. So in our second to last or first from the right mode, um, you can have exposure compensation. Here are your white balance settings. So if you want to change your white balance, you can set in a specific color temperature. You can choose a preset. You can choose auto. And we'll show you how to set your own custom white balance in a little bit. So you can also specify custom white balance. You can also shift the color temperature. Um, but uh, for most cases, you'd want to leave that for post-production. Right. Picture style and color space are more for still images than video. And in our last mode, these are mostly still image options not so much needed for video. If you want to learn more about options in the menu system of the 7D, please consult the manual. Let's look at white balancing specifically on the 7D camera. We're going to go into the menu, and it's the second menu to the right, where it has white balance and custom white balance. Um, some of the preset white balance are auto, uh, daylight, uh, daylight cloudy. You can rotate through using the joystick. Okay, and it gives you approximate color temperatures for each. You can also set a specific white balance color temperature setting. So 3,000 Kelvin degrees is what it's set to right now. Okay, if you use the wheel at the top of the camera, you can specify any color temperature you, you want within the acceptable range of the camera. You can see we can get pretty far. Okay, 10,000 degrees Kelvin is the upper limit. and 2,500 Kelvin degrees, the lower limit. So if you're not sure where you're shooting, just like uh, the normal ENG cameras you may have used elsewhere, 3,200 is your standard indoor, 44 is a good fluorescent lighting setting point, and 56 is a good outdoor. Those are good places to start, um, and you can set any color temperature you want uh, in those ranges. You may also want to do a custom white balance, which is actually recommended for your shooting area. Okay. This is this guy right here. You'll hit set. Okay. And now it's set to the custom white balance setting. But that's not all you need to do. You have to go one menu option down to custom white balance and actually set it to whatever custom mode that you want. The way this works is you'll want to take a picture of something white in your setup area. Something under normal lighting conditions as if you're going to white balance on it. Take a still picture of this. I've already done that. So what it's going to allow us to do is go through the different pictures on the card and let us choose what we want to be our white reference. So you can see I've already taken a couple pictures in Studio One of the whiteboard, the whitest thing we have in this space. Um, and I want to go for one that fills the uh, space almost completely with white. Uh, this one is close, but I've got one that's even better. So when I hit set on the wheel here, It'll say, are you sure you want to use the white balance data from this image for your custom white balance? Your joystick over to the right and say OK, and it sets it. Now when you go to shoot, your white balance will be set to that particular white balance uh, setting. Sometimes you'll want to check your shooting modes uh, without having to go into the menu 
And one of the easy ways to do this is hit the info button. The first time you hit info, it's going to give you the basic uh, information that you'd see and you're used to seeing in the viewfinder when you take still pictures. So you've got your exposure compensation, the count of still images that you can take left on your card, and your approximate battery life. Okay? For this camera, it doesn't give you an expected time. It just gives you a kind of empty to full gas gauge. If you hit info again, it'll give you even more information. Uh, so we're on our custom white balance. Uh, here are some options for still shooting modes, which we're not going to go into here. This is the big one. This is the one you want to double check. This is your video format for record. We're in 1280 60p. And right now, according to uh, what we have in the card, it says we have 29 uh, minutes and 59 seconds left on the card. Okay? That's what you'll always want to check. Uh, and then the additional options that we saw before are still here. If you hit info one more time, you'll get the electronic level. And as you can see right now, our camera is perfectly level on the tripod we're on. Just to prove that it's not, we can adjust it and it'll tell you exactly where you want to be. Your tripod should have a bubble and you should use the classical way of bubbling out your tripod to get a nice steady shot that's also level. But you can also hit info three times to get to the electronic level for the camera. Mm -hmm. To change the ISO sensitivity, you'd push the ISO button and use this wheel up at the top to change it. A is an automatic, uh, and then you can set any ISO to within the limits that the camera is set for. Right now, our upper limit is 6400. Uh, depending on your shooting situation, you might be anywhere from 1000, you know, all the way down to maybe 250. Depends on where you're shooting and your lighting conditions. Uh, if you just let it go, it'll eventually get back to your normal display and lock that setting in. If you're shooting in low light situations and you need to see this display, there is a light switch and then that'll time out after a few seconds. The other controls you can adjust are shutter speed and iris for your f-stop. Your shutter, if you're in the uh, 60p mode, the lowest shutter setting you can be in is uh, 60 frames per second or 1 60th of a second. Uh, using this wheel up at the top, you can't roll any uh, further to the left, but you can roll to the right to increase the shutter. Uh, your shooting condition uh, will dictate what your shutter speed should be. If you don't know, leave it at 60, and that's a good starting point. And the wheel at the back of the camera will adjust your iris f-stop. You can see that changing. Okay. Depending on your lens settings and the capability of your lens, this will range uh, quite a bit. When you're ready to shoot with your 7D camera, just turn it on here and make sure you're in the M or manual mode. This will give you the most control over your image when you're in both still and movie mode recording. Uh, if you're in still and you want to experiment with other uh, modes, that's fine. You can do so at your leisure. Uh, but we recommend that uh, if you know what you're doing, uh, stay in the all manual mode. And that's the best setup that you can use to control all functions of the camera at all times. Once you've got your ISO, your focal length, your f-stop for your iris, and your shutter speed all set the way you want them, your last step is to focus your subject. Uh, so to do this, you keep your focal length set. It doesn't work with all lenses the same way. So sometimes you might zoom in and focus, and then when you zoom out, uh, based on the focal length changing and needing to change the aperture, your subject might still not be in focus. So the best way to do this is set the focal length you want, Okay, that's kind of where we want to be for this shot. Um, and then use the electronic zoom, which is this little plus in a magnifying glass, to go in as far as you can on your subject. So we'll go to 10 times magnification, which is the closest we can get. And then we'll manually adjust our focus till that little bolt there, which is our key point on the subject, comes in focus. Hit the magnifying glass one more time, and we're back, we're set, we're focused, and ready to shoot. Different lenses will have different options in terms of auto and manual focus and maybe macro modes and stabilization. Um, your preference will dictate stabilization. Usually if you're on a tripod, you'll want it off. If you're hand holding the camera, you might want to try turning it on. Uh, depending on how the 7D is set uh, you, and what firmware updates have been done, the stabilizer for your particular lens may not always work in the video mode of this camera. So it's a compatibility of lens and camera. Try it out, see if it makes a difference. If it doesn't seem to make any difference, leave it off. 
because every amount of stabilization does take a little bit of battery power to make sure it's working properly. What you do want to make sure of is that your autofocus is actually in manual focus or the autofocus is turned off so that you can manually adjust the focus. On the left side of the 7D body, you'll find all the ports for connecting other devices. Most of them are behind the flap on the right side. So as we flip this up, you'll see we have a mini HDMI port. A mini HDMI to HDMI adapter or other cable will be supplied with your Canon 7D camera so that you can hook up to any of our HDMI devices. You also have the combination USB data port and uh, USB uh, style port for audio and video output. This would be analog audio and video output. And then you'll have your microphone in jack. There is no headphone output on this camera. So the only way to monitor is with meters uh, or headphones on your other device, unless you use the cable that we have supplied with this camera. So there's a cable here, and each side and each output is marked. It's got basically three ends. Uh, on one end, uh, it says line level uh, output of your mixer or other recording device. So this could be the Zoom H4N's output uh, or even the headphone jack of another mixer. This is what you'll plug in to your device into which you're plugging in all your microphones. Okay? Uh, on the other end are two outputs. Uh, one is your camera input. So this you'll plug into your camera. And then the other one is a headphone jack. So you can plug your headphones into this to hear the exact audio that's going into your Canon 7D camera. To record, when you're ready to record, uh, there is no actual record button as marked on the camera. Uh, you'll push the start stop button on the movie, uh, movie or still switch. As soon as you push start, you'll get the little red dot in the upper corner and a counter that runs uh, in the bottom left corner. A red card activity light will blink, telling you that the card is being actively recorded on or accessed in some other way. So we'll just give a little motion to our frame. There's a little motion. To stop, you hit stop. It'll write the file to the card, and you're all done. To review, uh, hitting the play button will review the last item recorded to the card, whether it was a still or a movie, it doesn't matter. Push play and it'll give us the option. And just follow the on-screen prompt. So to watch the movie, you hit set, and then it gives you play, pause, rewind, fast forward controls down at the bottom. So we'll hit set again. And you can hear the volume coming out of the volume port right here on the camera. We can stop it at any point. You can cue it to a different position. You can cue it back to the very first frame. You can cue it up to the last frame. You can go slow motion frame by frame and to scrub faster once you're playing. Hit set and then you can hold next frame. And you can see that the counter is starting to go a little bit faster as I hold set on uh, next frame. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to hear the volume uh, of playback while it's being played back, use the thumb wheel at the top of the camera to turn up or down your volume. To delete an image or a movie clip off of your card, uh, it's very simple. So be careful when you go to do this. Hit the play button and that'll activate the playback mode. You can use the dial to cycle through all the different shots uh, or clips on your card. When you find the one you want to get rid of, push the little trash can icon. It'll ask you, are you sure you want to delete? Right now it says cancel, but we want to use the joystick and go over to erase. Mm -mm. The wheel. Use the wheel and hit the set button, and it's gone. 